Hello, if you've ever worked with motion graphics templates inside Adobe Premiere Pro, did you know how powerful they are? You literally can just drag and drop them from the sidebar onto your video and bam, you have beautiful motion graphics. You don't need to go to After Effects at all, which is where they were created. It just works amazingly, right? And although they do offer some parameterization inside Adobe Premiere Pro, it is often very much quite limiting. So in this video, I will share with you my four tips about the things that I do in my edits with motion graphics templates to make sure that they fit the needs of my edits perfectly. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so we are here in Premiere Pro and let's start with tip number one. So let's drag one of the my motion graphics templates that I use, for instance, something from Peter McKinnon. Let's just drag and drop it right here on the timeline. And as you can see, it just works. If I hit the play, you can see it beautifully appears on the screen, then it lingers for a moment and then it disappears with a cool animation. And if you click on it and you go to edit, you can edit your wording, for instance, let's say, my tutorial and then it of course says my tutorial instead of Peter McKinnon by default. But the problem with that as you can see this motion graphics template it appears on your timeline as a standalone clip and the clip has a fixed length. It starts here you can see this little triangle and then it ends here. So what if you wanted to make it shorter or make it longer? How could you do that? Well, here comes tip number one. So what you can do, let's say if you want to make it longer, you can just right click, go to speed and duration and type here 50%, enter. And right here, it is just longer. It appears with the animation, it stays for longer, and then it will disappear with the animation as well. If you want to make it shorter, you can just right click, go to speed duration and dial in 200%. And this is something that I usually use with this motion graphics templates actually. And if you hit play, it appears faster, it lingers on a little bit quicker, and then it disappears faster. So speeding it up to 200% is something that I usually use because typically if I use motion graphics to kind of aid the things that I'm saying in my videos, I am pretty quickly moving on to another subject and I don't want those motion graphics to linger on for longer. And I also don't want to cut them in the middle because I want them to fade away with this kind of cool animation. But of course, as you can see, it affects the length of the appearing and disappearing animation. It either gets longer or shorter. What if you wanted to keep the same speed of the appearing and disappearing animations and just have the middle part when it lingers on a little bit shorter or a little bit longer? Well, here comes tip number two. So right here we are back with 100% of duration and actually if I scroll down, I can move down the second line a little bit down because it kind of overlaps. Yeah, that is better. Okay, so what you want to do, let's say you wanted to contract it. So what you can do is identify the place in this clip where the animation stops. You can hit M to place a marker so you don't forget. And then identify the second point where the fading out animation starts somewhere here, maybe a little bit before just to be safe, hit a marker here. And what you can do right now is you can just cut anything from the middle. Let's say you can cut this one. And then if you play it back, it is seamless and just shorter. It appears and it disappears quicker. The cut that you have made is invisible and the entire animation of this motion graphics is shorter. But what if you want to make it longer? That is a little bit trickier, but we can do it as well. So let's back it up. And right now what you can do is that if you have those points in time identified when the animation stops and it just lingers on and then when the animation, the fading out animation starts, then anywhere in between when the motion graphics just lingers on, you can just place a cut, so C for the cut tool, cut right here, you can hit V and then just move it out of the way a little bit. And then what you can do, if you zoom in closely here, just move it back just a little bit. It could be one frame, it could be a couple of frames, but one frame is fine. Move it back one frame, select this clip and right click and go to add frame hold. This will place a cut in a place that you had your playhead and what you can do with the second portion of this clip, you can just prolong it any way you want. You can make it as long as you wish. And what it basically does is that we added a frame hold. So the second clip, this one, we can make it uh, yellow to make it distinct, for instance. So this yellow clip basically holds the exact frame that was happening in this clip in the place where the playhead was placed. So if I'm cutting here, that the yellow clip will hold the exact same frame and I can make it any way long I want to. And if I play it back like this, 
you can see we have the animation that appears, then it lingers on, longer and longer, and then you have the second cut which is invisible, and then it fades out. So that way you can make the motion graphics clips any length you want with keeping the exact same speed of the appearing and disappearing animation, which is kind of cool. And what I usually use it for is that for instance, if I'm explaining something in my videos and for instance, I am listing uh, camera settings that I use for a specific shot, a time lapse or something like this, I would for instance say I was using a shutter speed of one over 500 of a second, uh, aperture f2.8 and ISO 1600 and as I'm listing these camera settings I would appear on the screen the textual version of this camera setting as I'm speaking it out. So first the shutter speed would appear, then the aperture would appear, then the ISO would appear and after I listed them all I keep them lingering for just a little bit and then they all simultaneously disappear with this kind of cool animation. Let's see how we can do that. So for that I'm using a different template, for instance something from Mari Hapoya, so I'm just typing MH here and this rotate looks kind of cool. It is a little bit too big because it is designed to be used in a 4K timeline. So I can just right click and go to set to frame size and then just move it a little bit here. And let's say that I'm talking about the shutter speed. So one over 500 of a second. And then you can actually duplicate it. So just hold the option key and move it up and then move it a little bit to the right. And right here, I want to move it down. And this will say about the aperture. So let's say aperture f2.8. And then the last one, again, I'm duplicating and I'm talking about the ISO so I can move it down. And I can say that ISO 1600, this is just an example. And as you can see, if I play it back, the first one appears with the animation then the second one, then the third one. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that they fade out with this animation all at the exact same spot. So what I can do is I can just prolong those two bottom ones. So again, I'm just cutting. I know that somewhere in the middle, it will definitely be the part where it just lingers on without uh, changing anything in the animation. And I can just move those parts to align it with the ending of this clip. So I'm just moving it like this. I'm moving it like this. Then I need the frame holes so I can just move it here. Add frame hold here, then on this guy, somewhere here, add frame hold like this. And then as you can see, they appear in sort of a staggered animation and then they linger on for a minute. Well, not a minute, a couple of seconds, and then they disappear simultaneously. And this is pretty cool, but as you can see, it produced a three tracks on my timeline. And this is a little bit messy. If you have more of that and you stack them together, you start getting more and more tracks. So here comes tip number three, which is just to, you can select them all and you can hit nest. And that way, if you hit OK, you have a single clip on your timeline on a single track. And it consists of every of those motion graphics that we have just created. And you can use that. For instance, you can move it around if you want and everything moves around in sort of a group. So definitely, if you have a lot of motion graphics stacked together, it's a good idea to use nesting in order to clean up your timeline. And as I said in the beginning of this video, most of these motion graphics have some kind of parametrization on the sidebar. For instance, you can change the text, you can change the font size, maybe the color, maybe the spacing a little bit. But sometimes those parameters are also quite limiting. For instance, in one of my recent videos, I wanted to fit a lot of text in one of these boxes that appear with the animation. But in order to make the box large enough to fit my entire text, the box would get too large and with too much of a margin from the top and the bottom. So as a final tip, let me actually show you how we can deal with that. So let's take a look at another example, shall we? So right here we have one of my previous videos, like I previously said, and we have this motion graphics at the bottom when I say that metadata like shutter speed, etc. And there is this black text and this sort of a white box. And because the text right here is fairly long, I need to actually make sure that my shape is fairly large in order to contain the entire text in the box. So if I disable the crop that I have right here, as you can see, the box is pretty large. I can move it up so you can better see what's going on. The margin on the top and on the bottom got so large because all you can do in the customization right here, if I have the shape settings, I can just change the scale. So for instance, I can use it like this and as, as you can see, it changes the scale, but I cannot get rid of this huge margin right here. So if I back it up, what I can do is just literally, I can just crop it out from the top and from the bottom, which is exactly what I did. And then if I enable the crop effect right here on this clip, 
you can see that I'm cropping from the top 48.5% and from the bottom 47%, which is exactly what I need to make sure that it looks nice and tidy right here on my timeline. So as you can see, you can use the crop effect and pretty much you can use any other effect in Premiere Pro to affect the motion graphics template because literally it can be treated as a regular clip. For instance, you can use masking to mask out certain parts of it. You can do whatever you want to do. And that is basically all I wanted to show you today. If you like this video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. I already have a lot of filmmaking and photography tutorials on my channel, so you can check those out. Basically, my channel is all about things you can do with your camera. I post new videos pretty much every single week, so definitely consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on future videos. But that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye-bye.